Welcome to the University of Duisburg-Essen. This video is produced by the Department of Physical Chemistry. Today we will find our way to Bode plots in electrochemical impedance. It is also sometimes called electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, EIS. We want to help students to evaluate the data. This video consists of four parts which you can find as a landmark in the lower 20% of your screen. These four parts are the simplest model circuit for the solid-liquid interface, the experimental results of some students, some algebra to get an analytic fit function with the computer algebra system MAPLE, and the final fitting of the experimental data with this analytic fit function. The electrical properties of a solid-liquid interface are determined by the transfer resistance RT and the interfacial capacitance CDL. The index T in RT means the transfer of charge at the interface. The reciprocal value of RT gives the probability or easiness of charge transfer at the interface. The index DL in CDL means the double layer of the interface. The electrical resistivity of the electrolyte solution is included by the resistance REL. EL means electrolyte. The impedance of the whole circuit is a complex value due to the interfacial capacitance. For complex values, as the impedance for this whole model circuit, we use the letter Z. It is clearly a function of the frequency F, with RT, REL and CDL as parameters. When you record your first impedance data, it might happen that your experimental data do not really look nice, especially in the low frequency range between 0.01 and 1 Hz you might record data which really spread a bit. You can easily evaluate the resistivity of the electrolyte between 1000 and 10,000 Hz. In the double logarithmic plot of the impedance versus the frequency, the location of the minus 1 slope is determined by the capacitance of the double layer. A shift to the left would point to a higher capacitance, a shift to the right to a lower capacitance. So we use CDL here as a fit parameter. The sum of the transfer resistance and the electrolyte resistance is the fit parameter for the left part of the curve. So we are looking for an analytic fit function. For this purpose we need some algebra. In the 21st century we do this by a computer algebra system. We use MAPLE. If you are a student at our university you can simply activate MAPLE on your desktop by opening the ZIM software shop. If you do not have access to a licensed MAPLE system, do not worry. We will not need to save a MAPLE worksheet. We only use the system as a transient calculation platform. You can do this without a license. Simply download a demo version. When you open MAPLE the first time, you can choose to open a new document or a new worksheet. For reasons of simplicity, we choose to open a new worksheet. We see that our cursor is pretty small, so we go to the magnifying glass and press it several times. And now we key in our first variable. It is uh, my first underscore product and uh, we define it so we must use a column and an equality sign and well our product is three times four and uh, now uh, let us evaluate it by pressing the return key we get the result it is 12. Press again the magnifying glass and on the right hand side we see a one for our first result. Now we want to make the square of the first product so we see uh, Maple already helps us 
by remembering the name of a variable, again return key, and we get 144. Let us now explore calculus with complex values. Now we use at first the magnifying glasses and now let us uh, uh, define a, vari a variable z1 and uh, we can define it with uh, the uh, complex macro of maple and uh, we can enter that and we now see yes maple writes z1 as 1 and the imaginary part plus 1 times i and you see it here if you open the variable uh, menu here okay we have indeed a numeric value here z1 okay now uh, then uh, we can uh, introduce uh, also uh, a variable z2 and uh, you can then use uh, the maple writing if you uh, like it for example you can here write it as 3 plus for example 4 times the uh, i then we have a complex variable uh, z2 the imaginary part is 4 and the real part is 3 now uh, how can we get now the, the real part and um, well we might guess that there is uh, a function for example with the name re so we really do not know so we will ask uh, the maple system whether there is uh, such thing and then indeed the uh, our maple help system opens and then you can get here a lot of information if you like it about the function uh, real or imaginary or you can also here get information about the uh, evaluation over the complex field. We do not need it now in the moment but uh, we can now say okay uh, we will use it and for example uh, want to have now the real part of the variable z2 so let us uh, evaluate that that's okay and if we want to have the absolute value of the uh, uh, complex variable z2 we can also say okay the absolute value of z2 yeah let us uh, evaluate that and okay yeah it is the square root of 25 and the square root of 25 is 5. So these are our first uh, uh, steps in a complex calculus here. We want to remember the complex capacitance of a capacitor. It's 1 divided by the complex i times omega times c. With omega as 2 pi f, we get zc is 1 divided by i by 2 pi times f times c. We want now to key in the result in maple for zc. So we call it again zcdl, dl for double layer. We use the column, the equality sign, 1 divided by the complex 1, the i, times 2 times pi, times frequency, times capacitance. That is, and we evaluate it by return key. Now we remember again the model circuit. We now define the resistivity for the transfer RT, so it is ZRT. Now we calculate the inverse value of the ZCDL and add the inverse value of ZRT and then we get this result. The D2 operator in Maple is a percent sign and now we use 1 divided by percent to get the inverse value of the parallel circuit. And now we simply add to that the electrolyte resistivity. And then we have nearly the whole result 
we only need to evaluate the absolute value of the complex resistivity eval C ABS and uh, we use again the D2 operator and then we have the whole result. Now we put the windows of Maple and Igor side by side on our desktop and then we carefully uh, copy and mark the result of the Maple calculus then go to analysis in the Igor dialog go to curve fitting and then we introduce a new fit function we call it for example Bode underscore fit and uh, well now we go to the function and co press Control v there's the result of maple in igor that's fine what is the independent variable it's the frequency f and our coefficients are the uh, electrolyte resistivity rel the transfer resistivity rt and of course the capacitance here of a double layer CDL. At first we test compile our new fit function. Test compile? Yeah, it was compiled successfully. Now we can save our fit function and now it appears in the dialog here as Bode fit. Our Y data are now of course for example the Z for resistivity here of the double layer of our student and then as independent variable the frequency or frequency uh, and uh, now we must uh, introduce coefficients so that the ego system uh, has some starting point and uh, so we go to coefficients and say okay REL how big would it be ah, let's guess it's around 15 ohms and well the RT uh, have a good, uh, around 10,000 or 20,000 we do not know so let us take 20,000 the double layer capacitance usually it's uh, something around 100 microfarads so uh, let us take that 100 microfarads and we say the uh, calculus not to hold any of his coefficients but just do it and he does the fit and it is pretty good. Now if you want to know how good your fit is you can uh, see it here so the double layer capacitance of 41 microfarad well you have an error of 37 the uh, transfer resistivity is pretty good and the uh, electrolyte uh, resistance 4 ohms it's uh, okay uh, not so good I guess. Let us now play around with the fit we put the uh, cursor A and drop it on the uh, Z curve and we see that there's an electrolyte resistance of 2.87 ohms and now we make the fit in a little bit different way so we uh, assure Bode fit yes now we go to the coefficients and uh, key in 2.7 8 for the uh, electrolyte resistance oh it is wrong it is 2.87 so we key in 2.87 and then we uh, save a fit procedure hold it and uh, then we do the fit again and uh, okay before we uh, uh, disable the uh, text box to the graph we do a fit again and now we see that it's a uh, pretty nice uh, that uh, the uh, electrolyte resistance is given it precisely but now we have a different capacitance of uh, 41 microfarads and the error is 35 and uh, that is our result now please remember that we could get our nice result without saving anything it's still untitled so you can use maple without uh, getting a license I would like to express my gratitude to my students Caroline Wey, Alexander Rostek, Robert Ramecker, Michael Lackner, Michael Lenyard, Matthias Linke and Tim Lemmerzahn. Thank you so much.